All right, this is one last midnight. Welcome back to another episode of Astroneer. And in today's episode, we're going to look at automatic rail junctions, where you've got two resources, maybe, and uh, they're off in the distance somewhere, and you got two rail lines, and they're going into one area to offload. First, I want to thank Ron LaFlamme for helping me noodle this out. We spent a little bit of time trying to get this working right, and he was a very big part in helping me get the logic down for this junction. So let's go over this scenario. I've got one resource, resource A, happens to be Malachite, sitting with an extractor and a station, and the station is loaded to auto load when a, a train comes in, and we have another resource on the other side, which is graphite, and that also has a station associated to it, and of course it's set to auto load when things come in as well. The train, and we're going to stop the train. Each one of these trains has an engine and a car. It also on the back happens to have a storage sensor and a delay repeater just to put a little bit of a delay on the car leaving the station. The storage sensor is set to full or empty. So when the car and engine get filled, it will trigger a signal, cause a minor delay, and then start the car back up. So Either way, if it unloads or reloads, it will fire a signal to the car telling the car to move. We have the exact same thing set up on the other side. So when it loads and unloads, it will send a signal to the car or the engine and telling the train to move again. The tricky part is when you get down to this junction and telling this junction to not only switch to track, but to keep the track open for the vehicle that happens to go into the offloading station. This rail station is set up to unload. That's all it's set up to do. It's got a couple medium storage silos sitting on there. And it's got some auto arms and it's got some large resource canisters to store our two resources that we happen to be working with. I have power off in the distance. Power could be any kind of power. I just happen to be using the solar arrays. So the automation comes in with this junction. How to tell the junction to, again, switch tracks, but then keep one track available for the one that is going into the station. And the way we're going to do that is with two AND gates. So let me walk you through how to set this up. It's not that difficult, and once you get it, it's easily reproducible and expandable to other lines. Okay, what you're going to need to set this configuration up is... You're going to need two medium platform Bs. That's to hold the sensors. You're going to need one medium platform A. Some sort of continuous power. This could be an RTG or acute RTG. Just make sure that this power is always continuous and running. You're also going to need four power switches. And you're going to need two power sensors. The power sensors are going to be set to powered gain. You want to set your configuration up like this with the medium platform A in the middle and the cute RTG on it. And then you're going to want to set your power switches on the medium platform B. Keep them close to the power area just so it kind of looks like this. It's easily separated. You can see what's going on. Uh, you're going to set the first one to on on both areas. And you're going to have the second power switch turned to off on both areas. And then you're going to put down your power sensors, set them to powered, gained, and you're going to put them on the end of the medium platform B. So just replicate this on both sides. So let's go ahead and set the power up on these guys so we can see what we're doing here. Your power is going to go from the medium platform A into the first power switch. And then on the other side as well, you're going to go from the medium platform A. Oops, move this. Let's lock that down from the medium platform A onto the first power switch, the, the one that's turned on. You're going to move the power switch from the power that's turned on into the next power switch and do the same for the other side. It's a little bit difficult trying to move these cables when they're so close together. Sometimes you get a little mismatch like that. If it makes it easier for you, you can set the power sensor on the ground and just hook the cable up to it and then move the power sensor back. You want to make sure it looks something like this, where you can see the arrows on the power sensors that going one is going to the left, one is going to the right. This last power cable on the power sensor is going to go to the platform. So you can see it going off to the platform like this. 
We're going to set this other one off to the side, and we're going to set it to the platform like this. You can see the arrows going down. And we've got our power sensors, and let's go ahead and set the pins up on the power sensors. Let's take a pin, drag it out, place a segment pin down. I just like to make this nice and easy for you to look at. Place another segment pin down, and we'll attach. And you're going to attach to this other rail track here. Make sure that your junction is facing you with this little net thing. And that way the tracks will be set up correctly. Do the same to the other side, the other power sensor. And connect it to the other side of the junction. So you should have these guys set up something like this. One power sensor is going to one side of the junction. The other power sensor is going to the other side of the junction. On the rail post coming in from the tracks... This is pretty simple to set up as well. You're going to take the pin, place it on the ground, and we're going to place it in front of the first sensor here and attach. We are going to branch, and we are going to make another segment and attach to this other first pin. So going first going from right to left. And you're going to have a configuration set up something like this. You want to replicate that on the other side here. I have a pin coming down. We will branch to the first one. To make this easier to see, let me just offset these a little bit. We'll branch to the first one. And then branch again. Create a segment and then put it on the second one. So what we're doing is we're telling this rail post to turn this one on and turn this one off. And we're telling this other rail post to turn this one on and turn this one off. So we've just made an AND gate. So the power sensor is only going to be activated when both of these switches are true. So one switch is on, but it's not allowing the power to go to the power sensor. When you flip this other switch, it allows the power to go to the power sensor, flipping the signal up ahead. Let me show you that again. So this is on, it's flipped. And then when the other one gets flipped on, you'll see that it switches. Now, we don't want that configuration. We want it set up just like this for our initial run. Let's go get the trains. Okay, I just manually moved my trains up. Remember, we have the train set to a storage sensor and delay repeater that's watching for full or empty. And so it will automatically trigger when those are full or empty. I have both my cars in the correct direction. They're going towards the depot. Now there's no resources on here and actually the sensor is wait to be full or empty. It's not going to activate, but we're gonna activate this uh, train and let it run to go to the station. You can see that the junction up ahead is blocked off but once this goes through the post it should flip that junction and allow the train to go over to the uh, deposit area and offload all right and when this train is going back you'll see that it goes back to the original point and when this new train comes in it'll switch to track and then this will drop off at the depot let's simulate this and as it goes back through it resets the trigger so that when the next train comes in, it'll flip the track. And this one will go back. I've got some weird little artifact going on here. So if you see a sensor floating around, that's what that's all about. So as these guys are going through, they're flipping the tracks. And they're maintaining the track. Because these two are set to true. So this AND sensor says, hey, look. If both of these switches are set to true, maintain my track. But once I go through it flip the track over and allow the other train to go through. We can watch this for a little bit so you guys can see how it works. Unfortunately, the because of the render distance, it's a little bit weird, but let's see here. Let's see if I can get close enough where you can see that these trains aren't really rendering correctly, even though I have this draw distance set to be the farthest. If there's ever a scenario where there's a collision about to happen, let's take a ride on the train. Let's go ahead and stop this for a second here. 
wait for the other train and see if we can't cause somewhat of a collision. Here it goes, flips to my track. This train is running. It's waiting until I'm complete. Once I move back through, the track will flip. The train will continue onward. I'll go back and get my thing. This will fire again. Oops, it automatically stopped. Uh, I'm going to mess the timing up. This train will come into the station. This other one is coming down, waiting for the unload. He flips the signal. Oh, wait, I can't go. And this one starts up again. So you can see how this automatic rail system works with two AND gates. Now, this could be completely extended. So as long as you're monitoring junctions like this, where two trains are coming into a single line, you could set up this type of scenario. So that's the automatic rail junction. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Would love to have you in the community. If you want to follow me on any of my social media, you can find links in the description below. And make sure to hit that notification bell. That way you know when I go live and when I post new videos. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.